All right, so let's talk about mail-in voting, absentee voting, voter fraud, because this is a topic of conversation that is going to come up a lot. And so let's define voter fraud. So voter fraud is manipulating the results of an election by rigging the votes, and electoral fraud all consists of voter fraud crimes. So it's all criminal. And these are illegal and interfere with the process of legitimate elections. Um, maybe we ought to talk. So there are a lot of libertarians, Reinhold, who don't believe in voting and don't think that it's proper. Uh, I'm not one of them. I think that if they have power over you, you ought to be involved in the discussion. But I certainly think and respect the, the point of view that like, if you're voting, you're just, it's a different form of violence. You're trying to, uh, persuade you're, you're trying to use the force of the state to make people live the way based on the candidate that you're selecting well it depends on what you're voting for if you're voting for people who are saying we're not going to abuse that or use that except in a self-defensive way then are you engaging in violence or are you engaging in a pullback from violence uh, that it currently exists so the reality is is that you can say i I don't believe in voting because you know it's it's violence, but and I want the state to end. But you not voting is not going to end the state. In fact, right. most of the people who are running as politicians are glad that those people don't vote mm -hmm. because then their supporters have more voice, more power in the political system. Mm -hmm. So I always look at it as get your voice out there. I mean, I'm gonna uh, I have I'm supposed to be going to do um, early voting. I was supposed to do it earlier this week, and I didn't get a chance to with everything going on. Uh, but I'm going to go vote and I'm going to vote for uh, most, you know, Joe for president and a bunch of other people. But people will say, well, she can't win. I'm like, well, maybe she can, maybe she can't. But I'm going to vote my view. And then that's going to be recorded so that somebody can see it so that, you know, we, we talk about polls. You can't believe in polls because polls are kind of it's a it's a it's a muddy science. I mean, it's a science, but it's also kind of a, almost a guessing game a little bit. You have to adjust and and do things. So it's not, it's not a hard science. Um, but people complain about the polling and they're kind of, kind of right in the fact that that's just kind of a snapshot representation based off a small sample. If you want to know what the people think, this is the only time you get to say that, right. That is recorded so that the politicians can see what's going really going on. And if you have a bunch of people coming in and voting for the libertarian candidate, and you're a Republican and you lose by less than how many people voted for that libertarian candidate, you might think, well, maybe I should reach out to them and figure out what they want and maybe incorporate some of their ideas into what I'm running for so that I don't lose again. Mm -hmm. And that's how you get your it, message out there to the politicians. They're not going to listen any other way. A libertarian. The only thing they care about is their job and their butt on the line and what affects them personally, and that's voting is the only way to do that. And it shows that there's a marketplace for those ideas. There's a market. It's a verifiable, quantifiable, you know, the reason that people go, well, we don't care about your ideas because you're 1%. Once you start getting to 5, 10, 20, 33%, then they start caring a lot more. They take a Rand Paul, a Thomas Massey, a Joe Jorgensen, a Gary Johnson much more seriously when that vote total starts increasing. It's a verifiable, quantifiable protest. And so that's why ballot access laws, in my view, are anti-First Amendment, because you're organizing, you're grouping together a group of people to make a political statement. And any limitation of that ability is against the First Amendment. Um, and so voter fraud is fraud, and it's against the non-aggression principle, fraud, murder, you know, theft. These are against the non-aggression principle. And so trying to cheat in an election is against the non-aggression principle. It doesn't matter if it's a Democrat or a Republican or a Libertarian or an Independent or a quote-unquote nonpartisan body doing it. Cheating in elections is wrong, and they ought to go to jail, and they often do. So some attempt to increase the votes to favor a candidate, and other attempts are to decrease the votes to the possible elected officials they do not like. So uh, if you are you're trying to increase your candidate's vote or you're trying to depress the vote of another. Now, when taking part in these illegal acts, the individual or group may use manual or electronic means. 
So there's a lot of people that vote by punch card, like a Scantron. I vote Scantron here in Marion County. But uh, if you're in Hendricks County, a, a county over, you vote with an electrical machine. Uh, I tried to get somebody on. I keep getting pissed off around all this, the, the voter fraud and mail-in ballot and all that. And I tried to get somebody on who worked has worked through multiple different you know, worked for election boards and worked for companies that sell those machines and uh, their boss didn't clear it. And then I couldn't get anybody from apparently local election offices are very busy and don't have time to talk to podcasts. Um, I so, don't know why they're just so busy. Right I know. Now. Right. So I tried to get somebody who has that, but so instead we did our research and, and tried to dive in and, and you can see those show notes, which were put together by Sam Schultz, our lead researcher and did an amazing job. Now, most voter fraud ex explained by the media or those feeling affected by it encounter other instances that cause problems. These usually include clerical errors, software issues, and data matching practices that are not beneficial to the process. Sometimes a mistake is a mistake and not, not intentional. Never, uh, never attribute to the government uh, a conspiracy theory when it's just plain old incompetence. Sometimes that is just a... Uh, Listen, I've been a part, I've watched meltdowns as a reporter uh, here in Indianapolis, and sometimes you just have a clerk who isn't effective. They're not good at their job, or they're brand new, and they don't know what they're doing, and they're, they're too proud to learn from the previous clerk of a different party, and you end up with a nightmare. Mm -hmm. that's, not, uh, that's not nefarious intent. That is just a person who doesn't know what they're doing. Uh, so what are some different types of election fraud? impersonation fraud at the polls so voting in the name of other legitimate voters who have died moved away lost their right to vote uh, because they are felons but remain registered false registration voting under fraudulent voter registration that either uses a phony name or a real or fake address and claim residence in a particular jurisdiction where the registered voter does not actually live and is not entitled to vote there's also duplicate voting this is what Trump was sort of saying, and please do not do this. Uh, although Wes is right, there's probably not many Trump supporters listening left. But please, if your family member is saying they're going to register in multiple locations or vote in the same election on uh, uh, in person and in a mail-in ballot to make sure their vote counts, they will catch you, and you don't want to do that. Please make sure that people don't vote twice. Fraudulent use of absentee ballots, requesting absentee ballots and voting without the knowledge of the actual voter, or obtaining the absentee ballot from a voter and now they're filling it out indirectly or forging the voter's signature or illegally telling the voter who to vote for. That's probably the most common form, uh, which is why 25% of absentee ballots typically get tossed out in elections. Less than 1% in in-person voting gets tossed out, but 25% of mail-in ballots. Buying votes. Paying voters to cast either an in-person or absentee ballot for a particular candidate. Illegal assistance at the polls, forcing or intimidating voters to vote for particular candidates while supposedly providing them with assistance. This is kind of common. Uh, you, you have the person who goes and picks people up. Now, when I say common, I mean very, very, very rare in the amount of uh, percentages of votes. But in terms of the type of fraud, this is somewhat common, especially with the elderly. Ineligible voting, illegal registration, and voting by individuals who are not U.S. citizens and are convicted felons and otherwise not eligible to vote. Altering the vote count. Changing the actual vote count in either the precinct or at the central location where the votes are counted. This is extremely rare. Um, ballot petition fraud. Force, forging the signatures of registered voters on the ballot petitions that must be filed with election officials in some states for a candidate or an issue to be listed on the official ballot. A June study from the Brookings Institution, uh, which is a left, center left, I'd say, in a similar research has shown voter fraud in the U.S. is exceedingly rare, including in the states that conduct all-male elections. The Brennan Center for Justice put out a report debunking the case of an abundance of voter fraud. We've got all of that linked in our show notes. The Heritage Foundation... Uh, this is a great article that I'll put in the show notes. Let's put the vote by mail fraud myth to rest. What's the actual scale of voter fraud? We'll go to a right-leaning foundation, the Heritage Foundation, for this information. Vote fraud in the U.S. is exceedingly rare. This is printed in The Hill. 
with mailed ballots and otherwise. Over the past 20 years, about 250 million votes have been cast by a mail ballot nationally. The Heritage Foundation maintains an online database of election fraud cases in the United States and reports that there have been just over 1,200 cases of vote fraud in all forms, resulting in 1,100 criminal convictions over the past 20 years. Of those 204 involved, 204 people over 20 years involved in the fraudulent use of absentee ballots, 143 resulted in criminal convictions. Let's put that data into perspective. 143 cases of fraud using mail ballots over the course of 20 years comes out to seven to eight cases per year nationally. Seven to eight cases in 5,000 counties. It also means that across the 50 states, there has been an average of three cases per state over the 20-year span. That is just one case per state every six or seven years. We're talking about an occurrence that translates to 0.00006% of total votes cast. Oregon is the state that started mailing ballots to all voters in 2000 and has worked diligently to put place in place stringent security measures as well as strict punishment for those who would tamper with a mailed ballot. For that state, the following numbers apply. Well over 50 million ballots cast... There have been only two fraud cases verifiable enough to result in convictions for mail-in ballot fraud over 20 years. That is 0.000004%, about five times less likely than getting hit by lightning in the United States. This hardly seems like a world in which thousands and thousands of people are sitting in somebody's living room signing ballots all over the place, quote, end quote. Um, now, it's almost as... It's almost as rare as getting COVID, right? And dying from COVID. Is that well, what those rates are now? Just please dominate it. Um, <laughs> so, the uh, let's go. I want to play something called The Circus. Uh, this is on Showtime. I have Showtime money. And I, I watch this show uh, every week because I think it's a really great show. And I think uh, so it's worth the eight bucks on Amazon Prime just to watch this show. It's, it's, uh, Made up of the people that wrote Game Change, Mark, Mark Halperin and uh, um, John Heilman. Mark Halperin was asked to leave after some inappropriate Me Too stuff. And uh, they started, they wrote these two great books on the elections. And then they started the show in 2016. And uh, Mark McKinnon, who worked for Bush at a high level. Uh, there's uh, the, the lady who worked for uh, Obama, as Paul Mary, who was his communications person. And then uh, reporter Alex Wagner replaced Heilman. And so the Bush guy, McKinnon, goes to uh, mail in. So in certain states, there are, and uh, we've got the, the name, in nine states in Washington, D.C., every registered voter will be mailed a ballot ahead of the election. California, D.C., and Vermont will do this for the first time this fall. Uh, so... Five states, Washington, Oregon, Colorado, Utah, and Hawaii, have all mail elections through universal voting by, by mail systems. So there, that, this has been expanded where every voter gets a, a ballot, which is different than the absentee system where you request the ballot. Okay, And that is the distinction that Donald Trump has seized on in that more states are automatically mailing out ballots, so therefore it must be fraudulent. Well, how do they check it? Long story short, when you sign up your voter registration, you sign your name. And they compare that signature to the signature on your voter registration card uh, on your ballot. And if there's any discrepancies, they toss you out. And so I've been a part of two recounts. One where the candidate won by three and another where a candidate won by 14. And spent days in the election board room watching these recounts and how this works. And I've watched multiple elections as both a reporter and as a party official and and just as a candidate and a campaign volunteer uh and what you learn if you actually go and engage in the process is how ver how secure your vote actually is and i know that it's hard for people to buy that because you sort of vaguely think there's a lot of fraud out there, but the size and scope of it is very limited. The last real case of fraud we have, it, it, fraud is so rare, as we just heard in those statistics, that you know about it when it happens because it's so easy to catch them. And 
it's and so when I say this, like I, I served, I was the libertarian representative on the Help America Vote Act Commission for Indiana. The secretary of the state wanted a libertarian, and I was the swing vote on that committee, by the way. Like so, I have a lot of experience in voting systems and watching elections here in Indiana, and I can tell you if you if you this system is quote unquote so corrupt that you can go volunteer to be a judge for your local clerk on election day. You can volunteer to be one of those recount watchers. You can volunteer as through a county party to go be a poll watcher to make sure there's no funny business going on. And there's always problems, you know, but there's very little net malintent. And when I say all this stuff and I try to give my credentials so people understand the depth from which I'm speaking over 15, 20 years, they go, you don't understand that your experience may not be everybody's experience. But that person that says that doesn't, doesn't realize that this is an industry where there are three or four standardized systems that are then purchased. And like every industry has standard practices, right? And so that's the same for all these different counties. So while there are 5,000, the, the reality is this is the, this is libertarian ideas and libertarian quote unquote government at work, right? Because this is so decentralized into 5,000 different counties across the United States, the system works really well. And the more centralized you make it, the less well it works, which is why we have to resist Congress getting involved in voting at by all costs, right? So you have an industry that's highly decentralized with some standardized practices and it functions correctly and catches the bad actors easily and prosecutes them at a very high rate. And what I saw in those recounts is very common. What you saw in what you saw in Minnesota in the Senate race or uh, in Florida in 2000, you, you get a ballot. And so all the votes get counted, right? And they check the poll book that you sign in Indiana. We call it the wagon book. When you go in to vote, you sign your name and they, they check that against the, the printed signature. So from your voter registration card and they match those signatures in, in person on absentee, they match those two signatures and most ballots go through, but there's a percentage of ballots where there's questions. And then a team of lawyers for Republicans and a team of lawyers for Democrats, as well as a bunch of elected officials and volunteers and non nonpartisan, quote unquote, watchers stand around this recount process. And they argue over whether or not this person intended to vote for the opposite candidate because they didn't cross their T or dot their I. Literally. Like the person who signed Mickey Mouse, they toss that person out. But if your name is Christopher and you didn't cross your T and I voted for Donald Trump, the Biden team will go, he didn't intend to actually vote, throw it out. And then a team of judges stand there and give you an instantaneous yay or nay. That's at least how it works here in Marion County. And that typically works across the, 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 now the biggest now, now, so I wanted to find a way to kind of show you this process because why take my word for it? Uh, so the, the circus did a great job of showing you a system that matches a lot of what I've seen and articulating the security around ballots. So take a look at this. Okay. Oh, sorry. Now, I mean, Harry, that deep state plant uh, just came across as totally lacking credibility. And I think clearly they're going to steal the election for the president. Don't you? This uh, system seems faulty. <laughs> I don't think the system seems faulty. I think there's a lot of huge processes in place, um, but a lot of those didn't happen overnight. I think that's why people are worried because they can see their town county and they don't see, they, they understand that type of system needs to be built and put in place. Um, I think it's an impressive system. The security up there is impressive. What I don't get is, all right, so this whole signature um, verification, that's like, it's terrible. I hate it. Why can't we, why can't we move into something else? There's so many other things. <laughs> Can you imagine the public screeching if we said, let's do it by retinal scan, though? Like, the, no biometrics, no hands, no, no, no biometrics. Two factor authentication or something, you know? I mean, we've got any, ways. anything. We've got so much better stuff, you know, but. Harry just froze. I mean, it's. It, I'm not talking about let's change it now. I'm just saying, like, 
Can we work on plan for the yeah. future? Yeah, playing for the future. Well, there's a lot of security. I love it. And then it goes like, well, it come down to the signature. I'm like, oh. Well, but that's part part yeah. of the issue is that Republicans and, and the, the data may bore this out. I don't know totally, but this is what I've always been told and always believed is that the more people that vote, the more Democrats get votes. And so you want to limit the ability for the population. So you don't want uh, election day to be a holiday. You don't want... You know, we have early voting now, so you you can go to the clerk's office or one of these early voting stations and vote. We we don't want any of that. We want to make sure that it's hard for people to vote. And I've even advocated, and I don't know that I totally disagree with this still, is that uh, you should have to write the name of the person you're voting for in full correctly. Because, like, if you're going to rule over me with your government, then at least know who you're voting for instead of just this straight party ticket bs we're not a parliamentary system where you select a party to 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 rule and then they select their their candidates but uh you know the the idea is limit the ability and uh, to to vote because you don't want liberals to win especially not them illegals reinhold well yeah you don't want uh yeah they're trying to give the illegals the vote man you know that's what's going to happen in california that's what's been going on in california which uh, it's it's all crazy. I mean, what we just saw on that is is a good system. And the thing is, is that once you get a good system like that in place that is successful and people see it as successful, other people then go and copy it. So that's, again, the best part about decentralization is that the better systems will prove out over time. And that's what's going to be mostly accepted and implemented throughout the the rest of the country. Right? Yeah. So this, this whole idea and the the worst part though is when you get into the mail in voting is that all the fraud that you hear the republicans talking about all the fraud but they're the ones that are getting caught doing it you know right. i mean when when you've got just they were talking about those uh the ballots that were thrown in a trash you know do you remember the story mm -hmm. about that is that the reason that happened is because of laws that the republicans put in place in order to try to limit the ability of people to vote, to, to keep the vote levels down um, and cause confusion in the post office. And they were they were uh, seen as ballots or uh, applications instead of ballots. So they got tossed. Right. So it, it was like that's you're doing this to yourself and then you're complaining about it. And I don't know, it just um, it just seems to me like they're trying to invent a reason to say this isn't valid therefore uh, i can stay in office right so let's give you some more details on some of this stuff uh nearly in 2016 nearly a quarter of the country voted by uh, u.s votes three 33 million were cast by universal mail or absentee ballots we told you those five states that have vote my mail systems uh mail voting rules for the 2020 election as of august 11th all states at least allow some mail voting, but it will make some more accessible to voters than others. In nine states and D.C., every registered voter will now get a mailed-in ballot. That's Colorado, Hawaii, Oregon, Utah, Washington, California, New Jersey, Nevada, Vermont, D.C., if you're in one of those places. In 34 states, voters can cite the coronavirus as a reason to vote absentee, or they can cast absentee ballots without specifying a reason. Here in Indiana, you have to have a reason uh, to get an absentee ballot, which is just kind of crazy. In nine states, every registered voter will automatically be mailed an application to request an absentee ballot. That includes Connecticut, Delaware, Illinois, Iowa, Maryland, Ma Maine, New Mexico, Wisconsin, Ohio. 25 states, voters will need to procure an application for an absentee ballot themselves. In seven states, voters will still need a reason beyond the virus to vote absentee. That means many voters in these states will need to vote in person at a polling place, barring any last-minute changes. Guess who runs these states? South Carolina, Indiana, Louisiana, uh, Mississippi, New York, Tennessee, and Texas. New York, that's a weird one. Several new pieces of state legislation are also still pending, and more changes could be forthcoming through executive action, litigation, or other mechanisms. Excuse me. Um, so how does the mail-in balloting work? Typically in states they allow abs that allow it, uh, the voter writes, calls, or goes online to request the ballot. 
and uh, they voters need an excuse for the absentee ballot in places like Indiana or Texas. In making their request, voters have to provide their name and address. After receipt of the request, local election authorities send a ballot to the voter at the home address and provide a security envelope for the ballot that keeps the vote choice private and another envelope into which the ballot is the sealed ballot is placed. The voter signs the outside of the second envelope to certify he or she is the registered voter. Upon receipt of the mailed ballot, local election authorities check the name of the voter to make sure the person is registered to vote and is casting a ballot from the address registered with the election authority. After certifying those facts, they remove the seal ballot from outside the, the outside envelope containing the voter's signature so that the voter's preferences remain confidential. On election day, states count the mail ballots and add the results to the votes of those individuals who cast their ballots in person. And that's why you see a growth in numbers after election day, because people, like we said, a quarter of voters across the country vote and they're not counted till election day. And so these there's two envelopes, multiple sealed. They're all anonymous. When you're doing a recount, you can't tell the name of the you can't tell who you can't tell the name of the person that voted. You just see who they voted for. Um, I'm misremembering that. Ignore what I just said. Uh, I'm going back to 2003 and thinking, uh, so that's probably not safe. Uh, during the presidential primaries, many states make it easier for people to vote by mail, and saw higher turnout in states that made fewer changes. And of the states that have held presidential primaries and caucuses this year, 31 have seen an increase in turnout compared to 2016. Of those, 18 had sent either ballots or ballot applications to all voters ahead of the primaries. So about half saw an increased turnout when they made it easier for people to vote. Six states continue to require voters to have a reason other than the virus to vote. Um, in those states, voter turnout stayed roughly the same. A major study of California, Utah, and Washington State conducted at, by Stanford for the elections of 96 and 2018 concluded there was no partisan advantage uh, for either party based on voting by mail. So that general feeling that this helps Democrats is not true. According to the Brennan Center for Justice at NYU, there is no evidence that mail ballot balloting increases electoral fraud. Several anti-fraud protections are built into the process designed to make it difficult to impersonate voters or steal ballots. These provisions include requiring people requesting absentee ballots to be registered voters, mailing a lot a lots to the official address uh, listed on voter registration rolls, requiring voter signatures on the external envelope, and having election authorities make sure the ballot came from the address. If the ballot appears questionable and the Fake ones almost always do. There's something off. You can tell. Uh, like we said, the, the, these ballots are almost always handled by a Republican and a Democrat judge and uh, are, are usually not left alone. Um, voting machines are always locked up. Like it's There's a whole system of security around all of this that you see if you go and volunteer. Again, if you're worried about this stuff, who when you go in to vote, guys— What's the general age of the people when you go in to vote? No, I would say about uh, probably in the 50s, 60s, around that time, a little, maybe a little older, depending on the, the average, I guess. The most vulnerable to COVID. Yeah. <laughs> they're desperate for people to help. Um, so, Kim, uh, now in states that have held, had this mail-in voting which has been, been used since 2005, those running elections see no evidence of widespread fraud. Again, what we just heard in Colorado. Ken Wyman, the state, Washington Secretary of State, said that all methods of voting had the potential for fraud, but that her experience in Washington was that mail ballot fraud was low. Here's how Washington system works and the types of fraud officials that they have encountered. Registration. Washington State checks to make sure the person is not already registered in the state and verifies personal information such as the birth date, the social security number to confirm it is the real person. In 2007, a woman in Washington state successfully registered her dog to vote and received ballots in order to make a point about the system's risks. 
But in 2016, officials in King County, Washington, said another person tried to register a dog to vote. The registration was not fully approved because the information did not match the records in state and federal databases. Here in Indiana, I used to get the voter file, and, and so I got 6 million entries into a database. And in that were driver's license numbers, social security numbers, uh, addresses, former addresses, how many primaries you may have voted in, what party you ballot you polled in that primary. And that, that voter file is only available to three parties, three party officials. I was one of them. The executive directors of the Democrat and Republican Party were able to get those those files. And those are the only people other than election boards and the state election division. Now, you could sell those voter files to a, a company like Aristotle that will allow uh, candidates to go in and find like-minded voters. And they merge that data with magazine subscriptions. So if you get a random trump mailer like i did it's probably because you subscribe to something like national review or you may have voted in a primary in the republican party in the past and that's why you're getting that mail because they buy that voter data and and uh compile all that information in but just to let you know that data is there and it's secure on the state level what what happens when it goes to the hands of a party official nobody knows from there now mailings uh, Julie Wise, the director of King County, again, said that in her experience, when someone steals a ballot from the mail, it is usually in the hope of finding some something else. Ballots in Washington state are tied to specific individuals with unique barred codes that record the path of the ballot. Voters can track to see when their ballots have been mailed and when the election office has received them back and whether or not they have been counted. So you can log on to your app or the website and see where your ballot is. A voter can monitor their ballot and call for a replacement and a, and a process that would rin, render invalid the original ballot that was, was sent. There's also fraudulent signatures that sometimes happen. Voters must sign the ballot to return the envelope. Workers at the election office are trained to examine signatures, checking to make sure the signature that comes in matches the one on file for the voter before sending the ballot along the line to be counted. A voter with a problematic signature will be contacted by the election office, sometimes by phone, and asked to fill out an additional form to verify their identity. Again, Julie Wise in King County said her signature has been rejected on two occasions because it had changed over the years, and she was able to dissolve the... Even the director of the county election board has been rejected. Cameras. Unlike state, some states that depend on volunteers and polling places, Washington State uses professionals to distribute the ballots and then collect and analyze and count them in a central location. Cameras are, are, are in use in the facility on everyone, everywhere, on everything, and the public can tune in to watch. Political parties and campaigns can also monitor the process. Uh, with the exception of the public tuning in to watch, that is exactly how it works in Indiana as well. Cases of fraud after elections, Washington has partnered with other states in a joint data analysis that looked at whether any voter that cast a ballot in multiple states. So, so you, can't, you can't cast a ballot, and there's systems to make sure that you can't cast a ballot in two different states. After the 2016 election, the system flagged 74, only 74 questionable votes in Washington state. 59 people who may have voted in multiple states, 14 who may have voted multiple times, and one deceased voter. These ballots were sent to the county election managers and prosecutors for further scrutiny. King County had the most cases. Officials there said in some cases they found data errors and the votes were legitimate. After scrutinizing cases, the King County did not see any significant fraud in 2016, but they sent letters to 10 people who have appeared to have voted twice. Current and former election administrators said it would be virtually impossible for a foreign country to produce and mail in phony absentee ballots without detection, an issue which William Barr, the attorney general, raised as a serious possibility. He said, we've been talking about how in terms of foreign influence, there are a number of foreign countries that could easily make counterfeit ballots, put names on them and send them in, and it'd be very hard to sort out what's happening. Judd Choate, unfortunate name, the election chief in Colorado, where nearly all voters cast ballots by mail, said there is zero chance it could happen in his state. In Colorado, ballot envelopes feature tally marks that are unique to each voter. 
Voter signatures are matched to those on file. Bad actors would have to replicate those marks, create ballots and envelopes made of the same paper and with the same design as authentic ones and accurately forge the signatures. States use a variety of safeguards to confirm the validity of mail ballots, and about half the state's ballot envelopes bear a tracking barcode or a tally mark that is unique to each voter. About 15 states require signatures to be matched against voter registration and ballots that are rejected if they're not sent in registration envelopes that vary widely from state to state in format, size, and paper stock. In states without those various safeguards, those trying to counterfeit ballots would have to know the names and addresses of registered voters, and there would still be a surge in forged ballots, duplicating ballots received from actual voters that would almost certainly raise red flags. Administrators have also noted that there is little chance that election officials would not detect a surge of duplicate ballots arriving from the same voter. There isn't an election office in this country that doesn't know how many ballots they've mailed out, how many they've gotten back in, and who they were sent to. It is absolutely not the case, and someone could create a multitude of ballots in the same way, infuse them, or inject them into the system without in detection. Tammy Patrick, uh, Maricopa County, Arizona, uh, uh, official said, now I'm a senior advisor for the Democracy Fund. So all of this is overwhelming, information and how much verification and how much tracking goes into mail-in and absentee ballots and in-person voting to show how secure all of this is. Did you guys know any of this? I did not. I mean, I didn't, I knew that there was a lot of stuff in place to protect that, but I just kind of uh, never, never knew about the entire details until we started, you know, doing this research and searching into the show notes. Right. Yeah. Diving in. Uh, it, it was more of a, they had to be something there. Um, you just didn't know, like, to, cause they have to be checks and balance. Because sure. If it wasn't, then yeah. Yeah. Fraud would be rampant. Um, I think the only experience a lot of people have had with this is watching the recount in 2000. Correct. And it was such a chaotic cluster. I think a lot of people have, you know, have come away with maybe a false impression of what really goes on because that was way, way elevated in the, uh, in, in, in the amount of just bullshit. <laughs> right. Yeah. It was, yeah, it was, um, in, uh, what's the, I'm looking, missing the word. Like it was just, it was ramped up the news, like yeah. made it the news of the day. Like, Oh, look at this is like, because if it wasn't, it was like a small County. They're like, Hey, right, that's happening over there. We don't know yet. If you've but, never seen a documentary on the 2000 recount, absolutely do it. Like the Brooks brothers riot and, and like, you know, you see John Bolton and all these people who are in positions of power now, like fooling with the vote in 2000 to win, you know, the Democrats were doing it too. I mean, it was just, it was, it was absolute madness. It's a, fascinating moment in american history if you if you're too young to really remember or, or didn't pay attention to what was going on find a documentary on it and watch it but i think we're a lot better now than we were i you know remember 100 years ago 200 years ago they were ballot box stuffing and doing all kinds of crazy things then so um i feel like we're a lot better along in that regards and mail-in voting has been going on for 100 years i mean or over 100 years since right? the I civil mean, war Civil, you know, I thought it was a civil war or a revolutionary or civil. Uh, World War One or something. But yeah, it's uh, it's just to me, it's. I think these people take this job very seriously as far as securing the vote and making sure that the vote is monitored and tracked. And you got to remember, as much as tracking as um, our government can do and does do mm -hmm. on all of us, you think they just this one's just going to be uh, well, yeah. Let's not let's not do that. You know, they're going to track it, too. So um, I, I find that very odd that they're just going to, uh, you know, take a hands off approach on voting. That's <laughs> when it's their power. I mean, that's that's the basis of their power. Mm -hmm. right. And so they'll, people on the left and people on the right are not just going to let the other side do those things because they're going to catch them. What what the, what politicians understand is that people for for the sake of legitimacy need to know that their vote counts. And this is run by bureaucrats of both parties. And so this is an example where balance in the system protects the average citizen and, and produces a, a good outcome. So because you have Republicans watching Democrats and vice versa and independents and then libertarians and everybody's everybody's focused on this decentralized system, 
and, and there's balance in it, it works. Right. And so, but, and the public is watching. And that's the biggest reason is the majority of the public cares about this and watches this and it gets done right and effectively. Where voter fraud takes place is gerrymandering, redrawing of districts in bad ways, ballot access laws, straight ticket voting, and the incumbent protection system that has basically been written into laws because the public does not pay attention to their legislature. They do not pay attention to what's happening uh, when maps are being drawn every 10 years, they do not pay attention to uh, the, the fights around removing straight ticket voting. That's where the system is rigged. Did you hear about the chuckleheads that um, finally got indicted when they were doing robocalls in Michigan, in no. Detroit? Oh, Tony. yeah, Jacob Wool. Yeah, Wool is, I mean, <laughs> we're waiting for him to do a big boy crimes, but he's still he's still working at it. But he did get actual indictment. I think people were surprised that he finally finally crossed to that level of success to get there. But you, you could hear the some of the. I, I heard somebody play the robocall that was sent out, and it's just it's just insane what they were saying. They were like, you know, that if you uh, you know you do this mail in voting, then the government will use that information to track you down for outstanding warrants and give it to credit card companies so they can find you and get your you know. So you so you can uh, pay your debts and um, it, it was just insane what they were saying to these people and um, you know they they got caught I mean everybody tries this stuff is going to get caught so I don't know why people would think that they would even bother with it yeah non Facebook user says regardless of the systems the candidates themselves have been undermining the confidence and the validity of the vote and that's really why we're doing this show is because the information of what I have seen and experienced and know is so wildly different than what I see from Facebook friends and from the president. And so because I know the president is propagandizing and just BSing because he, he wants to when he, when, and if he loses and I expect him to lose based on Senate polling and, and district polling, like New York 28, he won by, by 16. He's losing by one now in upstate New York. Uh, you know, little, little signs like that. Like he wants to blame others for his loss. And so it couldn't possibly be that he couldn't control himself and behave. It's that the vote was rigged. And there's and a, significant, a significant portion of people who are anti-government who will buy that because they don't trust the government at all. Mm -hmm. Good, good move. Totally for it. But also read <laughs> and be informed. And when, and so the difference between the, the gap in civics education, Reinhold, I think is, one of the more dangerous things is because people don't understand how their government actually works and they form opinions based on the word of a politician who is manipulating them for power and as opposed to actually looking into what's going on. They're, they're letting themselves be manipulated because they want that to be the truth. Right. You know, and that's the real key is that people who are supporting Donald Trump want him to win. And when he says the only way they can beat us is if they lie and manipulate the vote, which they're trying to do, well, that fe they believe that because that plays into their bias of what right. they think is going to happen. So that's how people get manipulated because they don't go, hey, wait a minute, is that true or not? And go look up the facts or, un you know, they don't dive any deeper into that because it just it hits the button in their head, hits the serotonin, they burn it in as a fact, and they move on. And I see that so many times where people will say things that are just completely not true. You can verify, I can go and search and find the facts and verify it seven ways a Sunday, but they still won't believe it because in their mind, they've, it's a belief at this point. It's a, it's almost like a religious belief system when it, when it hits at that level. Right. right? Um, and you can't, you can't wedge it out of there once, once it's lodged in like that. It takes a lot to knock it out. So Wes writes, what will happen when we are unclear of a winner and counting votes for weeks into November, maybe longer? And uh, I have sent a note to Wes and I said, I'm sorry, I'm not mad at you. I'm frustrated by it because I'm not understood. And he's like, I get it. Um, so what will happen if we don't know a winner? What will happen is that this propagate, he's laying the groundwork. Before a vote was even cast, he said the, the mail-in, there's all this fraud around it. 
Well, the problem with that is that's not that's never been true. And everybody who knows what they're talking about has been frustrated because they know what he's doing. And so the best antidote is for people to understand what we just shared with you is how secure this stuff really is. So please pay attention. And then you have to ask yourself on this. Once you understand it is why is this person lying? Why is Bill Barr lying? What's their end goal? What are they doing it for? And should I trust them? So, all right, well, let's wrap up, Reinhold. Final thoughts for the show. Harry had to drop off. Um, so I have, I have some final thoughts, but they're not related to anything we've talked about today. In fact, that's too, but um, I just want to say my dad has gone into surgery and um, he's coming out and it looks like he's going to do okay, but I still worry about him. But I just wanted to, uh, you know, kind of mention a little bit about how much of an impact he was to me in my life and, I know that I'm not going to be able to do that with a child of my own because of the situation I'm in. Um, and a lot of people don't have that, that I had with him. And I really encourage people. And I've said this before is to get out and, and be the example that you want to, to exist for people, for, for, uh, for the society, for community, uh, you focus on your family, make sure they're taken care of, but also try to be that shining light that somebody who doesn't have that in their lives can go to and, and uh, become a better person because of it. So, Great. Well, I hope, I hope he's doing okay. And I hope that uh, he, he gets better. I appreciate it. Uh, so it's just kind of, I hate to take it off the rails in that, in that area, but I just something I wanted to say and get out there. So, Oh, that's okay. Uh, me. Harry, Final thoughts for you? Um, when you go to in update your intrusion detection system <laughs> to verify your rules, because for some reason my IDS keeps thinking I'm under a DDoS and keeps requesting a, a IP address from um, my uh, from the ISP, or I could actually be in DDoS. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> oh my! <laughs> the um, my final thoughts about this episode is the um, when to me, like I said, voter fraud doesn't happen while you're voting something like that. Voter fraud happens beforehand. Always happens beforehand. You're polling data. You're not actively knowing who's on your ballot. That, to me, that's always been the voter fraud. Can the vote be more secure? Definitely can be. But, you know, it's 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 fine in what we've got. Can it get better? Heck yeah. But the, the, the real fraud is that you're not being told who's actually on your ballot. And they, so. Yeah, I've heard that, uh, what, straight vote, straight Ticket voting is what, um, legal voter fraud, pretty much. <laughs> well, hopefully you you have had your mind changed. And uh, again, the PDF of our show notes, so oftentimes it's hard to get people to listen to. We, we put timestamps into these shows so you can skip right to that, or we put all the segments up as individual YouTube uh, pieces. So like that voter fraud will just be that piece up on the YouTube So and, and segment it out. And then there's also the show notes. So there's tons of ways to share all this information with your friends on, on voter fraud. So uh, my final thought is thanking our patrons. I'm sorry I did not do this earlier. Thank you to all of our patrons, but especially our $100 a month contributors, Reinhold, uh, Brad Tracy, Anthony Meyer, Matthew Durbin, Jeff Bennett, Christy Avery, Jason Doolittle, and Ed Brehob. And my apologies to Casey Felposh for uh, mangling his name so badly. Uh, but I appreciate his contributions, and thank you for updating me, uh, Casey. All right, thank you so much for listening. And uh, we appreciate you uh, paying attention and uh, just patronizing this program as both a listener and as a donor. Please share it. We will see you again next week. <laughs>